Hey guys, what's happening? Beast here bringing you um, a couple of races today, something that I've been uh, trying to do for a few days here. Um, so, that was me firing up the game for the very first time and uh, getting my driver tower rewards. So, here I'm going to be buying a car. Um, I decided that uh, because I played so much of the career and built up so much cash, I'm just going to buy. Because uh, initially I only had like 750 grand, now I've got over 3 million. So, I just decided I'm going to buy the Sesto Elemento. And that's such a beautiful car, isn't it? Just said I'm going to buy the Sesto, Sesto Elemento, and then I'll just try it out, uh, see what I think, and then if I need to buy something different, I will. Um, and I don't know yet. I only did a couple of races with it, so um, it's an interesting-looking car, I guess. Um, kind of looks like the Gallardo or the Huracan. Uh, I'm not super crazy about the way those cars look, uh, if you ask me. Um, yeah. And here I'm just trying to buy some, just going to look at some different paint options. It looks terrible in that flash paint. I wish you could do like a matte color like they had, like they let you do in previous years. You could do like matte or metallic or pearlescent. So then I went over there and looked at those and I thought those looked terrible too. So I was like, you know what, I'll just go manufacturer. So, yeah, I mean, you can buy it. There's two ways to buy it. Um, when you buy it, all the homologated parts are included. So that means that if you go into a race where the car has to be homologated, meaning... You know, they can't exceed a certain tire width, and I just, there, just hit collector car 15, collector score 15. So, you know, if you go into a race where, like, you have to have three, you know, this one I think is, like, 345s for tires. So it can't be wider than 345s. You can't have more than a certain amount of horsepower and all that kind of stuff. So in that case, you know, you buy, basically you buy the car with all those parts included, so you don't have to spend extra for them, but I chose to have them fitted right there. And so you'll see me searching for a... Uh, hopper lobby here and I got into one here. It's gonna be Suzuka, which is awesome I really like this track um, We're now counting down and here's the start of the race. So um, this is just the default tune. Uh, this is no um, no tune at all And this is just me uh, just driving it for the first time So as you can see there's a Lamborghini Veneno in there that guy over there that Ivana Cubo guy is absolutely horrendous driver absolutely terrible driver Look at that just roll this car and uh, he I had a, I had trouble with him in the next race which you'll see in the next race um, but he's terrible he's so despicable I almost rammed him off but I don't do that so I just, obviously I didn't but I thought about it I heavily thought about it because he was just absolutely terrible and he was hitting people and just causing all sorts of problems so yeah anyway um, so this is my first time driving it. Um, fir first thing I'll notice, and again, there's another guy who comes right back on the track right after he goes off, and then he's going to clip me and then hit me a second time. Um, my initial fears about this car are, are confirmed. Um, the steering is terrible. Uh, even with a grip tune that I used from Race Boy, who's one of the best tuners out there, um, even with that, uh, the turning is terrible. Uh, the all-wheel drive is disgusting. Uh, you can't brake and turn at the same time. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a problem. So, we'll see how this goes. Um, also, on a side note, the back of this car looks disgusting. And not in a good way. Like, it literally made me throw up in my mouth when I saw the back of this thing. Um, those exhausts that exit underneath the spoiler, I'm assuming that's so they don't have to route them down. They can save a little bit of weight. Uh, but the back window or whatever that thing is you call it, I think looks disgusting. I think it looks horrendous. And the back of the car is way too flat, and it's just, it, no thanks. So, this, I mean, the Sesto Elemento uh, means sixth element in English, uh, referring to carbon, uh, because the car's extensive use of carbon fiber. Um, so, basically every component of the car that can be made out of carbon fiber is, um, including the whole chassis, the drive line, the drive shaft, uh, all that stuff is all made of carbon fiber. So that allows them to get the car down to a ridiculously light level. Uh, 2,200 pounds is how light the car is, which is extremely light. Um, when you look at a car like a McLaren, like a 675 LT, or something like that, like one of the really light McLarens that can go extremely fast, those are like 2,900 pounds. The Ferrari 488 Spider or 488, uh, just regular, which uses the you know, it uses a ton of carbon fiber also, and it's obviously a $400,000 car. Um, those cars are like 3,000 pounds, right around 3,000 pounds. So to get a car to 2,200 pounds is extremely, extremely light. 
Uh, and it uses the same engine as the Gallardo does, which is a 570 horsepower engine. Um, now, uh, to date, this is still the Lamborghini uh, with the highest horsepower to weight ratio that's ever been built. Um, and it was the most expensive Lamborghini ever built until the uh, Veneno came along, which Veneno is incredible. Incredible. If you haven't seen an actual Veneno or a picture of a Veneno or anything like that, they are absolutely insane. There's only a limited supply of those, but there's only a limited supply of these two. Um, they, they plan to build 20 of them. There's really no word on how many they have actually built. Um, although, uh, this was debuted in, I, I think, 2010 or 11, and they said that they were going to start selling them in 2013. Um, and it's only recently that two of them have popped up for sale, uh, just recently in 2017. So they're, you know, they're, they're, pretty, they're pretty exclusive. They're said to be somewhere between low two and high $2 million, so like 2.2 to 2.9, somewhere in there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've said this before, but the car has no dashboard. Um, you'll see me. Uh, actually, you know, I don't do driver view in this video, so never mind. But uh, there's no dashboard. Um, there's just like a weird connecting area uh, for the speedometer and stuff like that between the two areas. And that was so much of a better turn that time than the first time. There's no dashboard. There's not even any seats. Um, the seats are actually just depressions and cutouts in the carbon fiber um, that have padding in them. So you're actually sitting basically in the tub of the car. There's not an actual seat. No radio, no air conditioning, none of that stuff. And as you can see, the bumper is pretty minimalistic. Uh, the exhaust, as I said, is routed straight back. I'm assuming that's to save weight so you don't have to wrap it down and around and across. Um, but I can't be sure on that. Um, yeah, it's all-wheel drive, which to me seems a little weird because, you know, you could probably save a couple hundred pounds. You could save 100 or 200 pounds maybe by not going all-wheel drive. Um, and not having to drive the front wheels too with their own differential, but I, I, don't, I don't really know. I mean, I don't know the specifics of that enough to say that that could or couldn't be done, but it um, seems like if you're going for an ultra lightweight car, which they are, uh, it seems like they would want to do something like that. So yeah, I mean, the, the horsepower to rate ratio, I think is 3.86 horsepower uh, per pound, or 3.86 pounds per horsepower, excuse me, uh, which is really high. Uh, something like a you know, Subaru STI, uh, which is considered sort of like, I'd say like an entry level to a to the like light sports car. And those are 10 to one. Um, if you look at something like a Corvette uh, Z06 uh, with a supercharger, or, you know, 600 horsepower roughly, and those have 300 pounds, those are like a five to one. So this car being, you know, as light as it is, it's a, it's a 3.86 to one, which is pretty crazy. Um, you know, even motorcycles, that's, that's approaching motorcycle territory as far as um, horsepower to weight, which is just ridiculous. So they, they said 2.5 uh, 2 seconds, 0 to 60, 0 to 62, you know, 0 to 100 kilometers, uh, 2.5 seconds, which is pretty fast. Um, at that time, you know, in 2010, 2011, when they announced it, that was ridiculously fast. Now, you know, you have cars like the 918 Spider, which can do that, or, or even faster. Um, so it's not... I mean, that's still incredibly impressive, but, you know, at the time that this thing was announced, that was, like, mind-blowingly crazy. But, yeah, I was, I was, um, I can't even find the word I'm looking for. I was debating between this and another car. Um, really, the two leaderboard cars were this and the Zonda C, the Zonda Chinke. Um, but, after looking up the Zonda Chinke, I, I found out that it was a, um, let's check the lap times here after I vote for the track. So, 206. Um, so yeah, not great. Uh, that would actually be 282. Obviously, it wasn't a clean lap. Um, but two minutes on the first pace, so that's still way back. But, yeah, it was between this and the Zonda Chinke. I looked up the Chinke, and it was a specialty dealer car, uh, which is unfortunate. And once I read that, I remembered seeing it. I remember that it came up, and I wasn't able to buy it because I didn't have any, any uh, credits. So that was unfortunate. So I can't have access to that. Um, the Zonda R is, I guess, the alternative, and there's really no Zonda Rs up on the top page of the leaderboards. There's one or two, um, but out of, you know, 20, 15, 20 tracks, that's nothing. Um, and so this was a race on uh, the Homestead. Um, this track sucks. I'll just be honest and upfront. This thing sucks. I don't, I don't know what that was. Some sort of lag, and then you see there's some sort of crash going on there. Those guys, I don't really know, but this track absolutely sucks. It's so bad. One of the worst tracks I've ever driven. Um, but these are my first two races with this car, and uh, so I wanted to buy the, the Chinke. I'm not going to buy the Zonda R until I do some more research on that. 
Um, but I figured, like I said, since this is the guy right here, he's just so bad. He's so bad. And I might have, you know, it, it might be my fault what happened. Maybe, I guess we'll see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I kind of tapped that in. And this thing, I mean, seriously, like, no joke. It's around a drive an all-wheel drive car. is so different. It's so much harder to control. There's lots of different things that I'm not used to. Like, just the braking is terrible, and the steering on and off power is just, I mean, it's, it's horrible. That's all I can say. It's horrible. And I should have known. I should have not bought the car. Um, but this is what it is. I'm going to see if I can sell it. Because I'll probably just do that, because I can't, I can't deal with it. It's, it's just so bad. Um, but I just decided, you know what? I have over 3 million credits. I could buy this and another car, so I'll buy this, see how I like it. And, uh, yeah, I don't. So... And, so, you know, something about V10s, too. I, I sort of have a, a bias against V10s. Um, I just don't think they sound that great. Certain V10s can sound great. Dodge Vipers sound okay. Um, and, you know, I, I'm totally drawing a mental blank, but I think the LFA is a V10. That sounds ridiculous. But um, And the Carrera GT sounds amazing. But other than that, I, I, I don't like V10s. So, kind of biased against those, and I just wasn't sure about the all-wheel drive, and I, just, I made the wrong decision. I'll just put it that way. So I bought the car, and uh, yeah. So look, there's that guy again. Causing accidents, causing wrecks. He's just so bad, honestly. And you'll see what happens here in a second. Let's see if this is the turn that it happens on. There's just there's this weird like the car doesn't react right when, when, when something happens when there's a slight tap and you try to steer out of it the car doesn't doesn't do it I, I don't I don't get how to explain it other than I'm certain it's all wheel drive because the same thing happens with the 918 Spider uh, but I mean any sort of little slight tap and you see I'm braking way too deep in these corners because the brakes are terrible the brakes suck and you can't turn and brake at the same time so not that I, I don't, I'm not too trying to turn 90 degrees when I brake but when I brake I try to line myself up for the turn so you can, you, you know, you can adjust the nose a little bit based on what you need to do. And of course, that's because I use ABS. If those of you who don't use ABS, you can't do that. But it's just it doesn't handle the way I want it to. It doesn't handle the way I expected it to. Well, that, I take it back. It does handle the way I expected it to, which is terribly. And uh, yeah, so this one actually, uh, I believe I have the tune downloaded on this one. So I have the tune that I'm using by Raceboy on this one. So this is a grip tune. And see, that was good there that I figured that one out. But see how it, it breaks wrong and then it steers wrong when I'm trying to take the corner. It's just very... And it's not just that I'm not used to the car, because that's a part of it. Um, it's just that that's not how the car should behave. And so I've considered turning traction off uh, to use this and see what kind of difference that makes. Because I know it would make a difference, but I, I haven't done that. I have a little bit of time to experiment here while I'm waiting for this to render, so I might do that. I might try to mess with the traction or whatever, because it's just, it's not, it's just... I think I did hit the wall there. But as you can see, like, look at the look at the back of the spoiler, it's something I haven't touched on yet. Look at the sides of the spoiler, you see how that's shaking? That's so epic. Not really, because it doesn't affect the game at all, but just the fact that it does that. And that was one of the best first turns I took all race. This one, not so much. And especially at, like, low speeds. The, so, like, see that? I don't know. I mean, yeah. First of all, obviously, I have to get used to the car. That's a part of it. But, like I said, second of all, it's not just that. It's not just getting used to the car. It's just the car in general. Because, generally, I would have a lot more success with another car already by this point. Uh, and, I mean, I'm in fourth place, so it's not like the end of the world. It's not like I'm doing terribly, but it's just not... It's not right. You see how it slides like that? This is with a grip tune. It slides when I'm turning and I'm on power. It's got this incredible push understeer, and you have to lift off all the time. The front wheels are trying to turn and drive at the same time. It's basically like trying to drive in the snow in a front wheel drive car for those of you who've done that. It's just it's terrible. There's no like there's no control at all. You know, you don't want to be putting power through your front wheels while you're trying to gain traction going through a turn while you're heavy on the brakes, you know? The car's squatting forward, you've got all your suspension and all the weight of the car on the front wheels trying to turn, and then you're also trying to put power into them at the same time. It's just, it's a, it's a flawed, 
just a flawed way to drive it. And, you know, Lamborghini loves to loves to do those four-wheel drive cars. And um, it's, it's curious to me because one of the interesting things is if you look at the Aventador, uh, the Aventador is one of the last, uh, it is the last supercar that has a single plate clutch. So all the new ones have dual clutch. And all of them have, you know, the semi-automatic. And while the Aventador does have a semi-automatic, it, it, it's a single, it's a single clutch. Now watch this. That was a clean pass, right? About as clean as you can get for a pass. Coming up on the guy, go past him. He's 50 feet behind me. Now watch this. Watch what happens here. Look at that. Unbelievable. This was after I'd already had a full race and a full bunch of just like, dude, this guy sucks so bad. And again, there's the car not behaving the way I want it to as I come back and try to correct not driving the way it should. So the Aventador has a single clutch transmission. And that was a, a thing for Lamborghini. They wanted to save a little bit of weight, which the dual clutch transmissions are obviously much heavier. Um, but also, it, it's more of like, a, you know, all these other cars are going hybrid also at the same time. So Lamborghini is really sticking to their guns with this old school stuff of, you know, naturally aspirated V12, big old engine, and single clutch transmission. It gives the car more of a brutal, more of a visceral type nature to it. And my heart was pounding so hard right here. Um, but, I don't know. Four-wheel drive, I think it sucks, personally. So, that's just my own opinion. So, um, anyway, thank you guys for being here watching my video. Thanks for checking it out. There's plenty of other videos on my channel if you want to check those out. Um, and make sure you subscribe and check back soon. I've been uploading every day and I'm going to continue that. So, um, thanks for being here and checking it out. See you guys again soon. Thanks.